it looks like a regular Volvo V60 to a point that the press office decided to put some stickers on the car to make everyone think twice about what they're driving. Well, I'll think twice with you. Some facts first. Under the bonnet is a 5-cylinder 2.4-liter diesel making 215 horsepower. There is an electric motor and some big batteries under the boot floor and in the boot as well. We'll get back to that in a minute. Volvo promises the hybrid drivetrain produces 283 horsepower and more than 600 newton meters of torque. Unfortunately, there is more than 150 kilograms extra weight to carry around compared to the regular D5 all-wheel drive model. That's right, the electric motor which is mounted in the back powers the rear wheels, so you're not only getting a plug-in hybrid, you're also getting an all-wheel drive vehicle. Perhaps you're wondering what happened to 125 liters of the regular V60's 430 liter boot. Well, Volvo not only made an all-wheel drive hybrid, but also a plug-in hybrid. You can charge it from a regular socket, drive up to 50 kilometers emission-free, and then the car switches into regular hybrid mode. Sounds sweet, but before we hit the road, let's look inside the cabin. I like hybrid and electric cars because usually there is something space-age about them. They look strange, they've got some strange button or knob to fiddle around with and they launch off the lights silently, really fast, like an arrow from a crossbow. And there's nothing like that in the Volvo. If it weren't for the pure hybrid and power buttons, which are placed where usually the auto comfort and sport buttons are, I would not realize I'm driving a hybrid car. Well, a plug-in hybrid anyway. Uh, if I press the accelerator harder, the diesel engine kicks in. So forget about uh, launching fast from the lights. I know that's not why you buy an electric hybrid or whatever car. That's not why you buy an eco car. But uh, the other day I was driving from the lights and there was an older guy in a Daewoo Matisse just waving his fist at me. And he was really angry because I was driving too slow. I don't know, maybe the Swedes are nicer or something. The zero emissions range, well, I'm actually not disappointed. I'm used to the fact that manufacturers promise uh, one thing and uh, in real life it's nothing like that. Volvo promises this car will do around 50 kilometers in zero emissions mode and I managed to get about 35. I tried different routes, different roads, different driving styles, a uh, couple of days and every time I got 35 kilometers. So I assume this is the realistic range. Although the car can be preheated while it's still plugged in, unfortunately it cannot be cooled down. It's a shame. In a Toyota Prius you can order the optional solar roof panel which powers the ventilation on hot days. Here you can program the heating from a menu on the dash or via a smartphone app. But your device needs to have the most recent version of Android or iOS. In the electric mode you can drive with speeds slightly above 100 km per hour but uh, that's pointless really because you run out of juice faster. Uh, on long straights I suggest you put the car into uh, battery save mode uh, which uh, will conserve energy obviously and if your back battery is low, the one that drives the rear wheels, if it's low uh, it will even recharge it to about a third of its capacity. Although I have a range readout, estimated range, I would like to see how many kilometers uh, I actually drove in the zero emissions mode. If there is a zero emissions mode meter somewhere, I couldn't find it. And I don't want to reset the trip meter every time I unplug. Once power in the big batteries is depleted, the car goes into classic hybrid mode in which the diesel engine works together with an electric motor to reduce fuel consumption when the car starts moving during rapid acceleration or coasting. Unfortunately, the diesel engine sound is unpleasant, especially after a period of electric silence. 
At the beginning, I told you that uh, if it weren't for the uh, pure hybrid and power buttons, uh, I wouldn't uh, have noticed that this is a hybrid. Well, I was referring to what the car looks like. However, when I'm driving, I feel the additional weight. The car wobbles on any imperfections uh, in the road and the steering feels like it's made of rubber. In the power mode, uh, this car will do 0 to 100 km per hour in uh, just above 6 seconds, which is pretty swift, but this Volvo is not made for dynamic driving. The day I picked the car up uh, from uh, Volvo, the uh, batteries, the rear batteries were out of juice, so I drove it for, um, I don't know, a couple of dozen kilometers in the hybrid mode only. Since then, every morning I charged it, I unplugged it, and I drove my daily commute daily routine uh, about uh, 40 to 50 kilometers out of which 35 kilometers was always in the zero emissions mode I managed to bring the fuel consumption down to about 4 liters per 100 kilometers so I suppose if I had another couple of days I would probably get it down to around 2 liters which is close to what Volvo promises otherwise there's the usual set of Volvo safety features including city safety which is a collision mitigating system working at speeds of up to 50 km per hour and emergency brake assistance. The good news is, charging takes 4 to 8 hours depending on the wiring you have at home. And here I should say something about the costs. Here you'll have to do your own calculations based on your local energy and fuel prices, but in Poland, running this car in zero emissions mode costs less than half of what it would cost to run it on diesel, which sounds pretty good until we get to the price. And the price is 15,000 euros higher than the equivalent V60 D5 all-wheel drive. This is of course the sticker price without any eco-incentives. Now we don't have any eco-incentives in Poland, so this car is rather expensive here. However, if there are any eco-incentives in your market, let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear what it's like in your country. But with some extras, this car costs around 65 grand. For this sort of cash, you can get a regular Prius and a Prius plug-in hybrid, an Opel Ampera or a Peugeot RX-H and have some serious change left. Or buy two Nissan Leafs. Watch my reviews of these and other cars. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the channel logo in the upper right corner. New reviews every Friday. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. You'll find all the links in the description below. And now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.